So I'm going to start that. Let me just check. Yeah, starting. Okay, hi YouTuber. We're going to let you pick our live Zoom meetings today. The subject matter, as you see, is uh, ducklings and some other subject matters. So I will turn to my well, I'm not going to answer any comment on YouTube, sorry. You might only see small windows later when we have some conversation, but now I try to show my demos. Anyway, let me go back to my room. I'm going to start recording. Let's just do it in one minute to start the meeting. So record, start recording. No, we are on candid camera. <laughs> okay. Um, we have one minute. Let me just uh, start with a brief greeting. Uh, we we have a uh, two a global audience uh, participants today uh, from uh, Japan. Welcome. From uh, let me put you on speak on the gallery view. So. We have someone from Europe, from Eastern Europe, from Bulgaria, Bulgaria, Bulgaria right? I, I can't pronounce the name correctly. And we have someone from Europe, in UK. I'm expecting Andrew and uh, Canada, maybe from uh, Quebec, right? So we, we are all over the world. It's an international community of uh, um, Sumi or Chinese brush painting lovers and fans. We have been, um, most of you probably have taken my online class, I assume. Um, if you're not, you, you should take a look. Let me just go there while we wait. Uh, because we have some uh, people asking me how to upload their work for critique. Uh, is Cassie here? I suppose she sent me uh, some photo to show how to yeah. how to do that. Okay, great. Yeah, I can show you how to do it. Yeah, let me just go there. In a minute. So this. Oh, okay, let me share the screen now. I'm going to disable everybody else share screen, so we will not. Remote, da, 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 da. Enable waiting and not removing. Prevent. Pre uh, I don't think I can do that. Let me see. I'll just do it to myself first. Yeah, you're supposed not to share, but I, I'll, I'll do it here. Um, this this is uh, Victoria and uh, Henry's uh, class, a uh, joint class. Somet sometimes, sometimes. Uh, uh, before we, we had only my name and my picture, but actually her picture is uh, on the side. We, we, we will try to put it together, but uh, anyway, you can, uh, you can see we, we have a joint uh, class. So both Victoria's uh, calligraphy lesson from um, Zoom, and you can um, submit your work here. And my work, uh, my uh, forum is under World Travel and Life Workshops. And uh, I opened for each class. We have a. Um, let me see how do I scroll this down? Okay. Yeah, we have a a, a, a meeting. Uh, I mean, a discussion room. So for today, I opened this discussion already. Uh, I I list some some uh, plans. Uh, any plan could change, but uh, in the beginning, um, I'm going to do this darklings because. Um, this happened to appear in my friend's uh, social network. Uh, the, uh, someone in East Coast shot this on the street. So it's very inspiring. Very seasonal. I, I think it's we're always good uh, you know, to paint something seasonal. And I have a request from uh, uh, Keo about uh, doing this. Uh, Cherry blossom. This is an all uh, not all uh, acrylic I did for a, a project I was uh, working on, and uh, I should have that elephant here. 
incidentally, I'll, I'll bring that later. And uh, this one was actually left over from last lesson. I had uh, uh, this reference from uh, Cassie. Okay, and if we have time, we can do something else, uh, like a bees I, I, we talked about earlier with Terry, okay? Maybe we combine this with bees. I think that would be fun. Um, so when you have homework, you can just simply reply to this. this here's the reply box. You can put anything, and then you can, you can upload a picture. Um, on PC, it's uh, done like this, but uh, maybe on different uh, device, you may have problem, you can use attachment instead. Uh, so you, you can upload a picture like this. And I usually specify the width, otherwise you default to, to uh, 750. So this one is uh, smaller than so just, you can write anything, you know. Yeah, so, and then I will write comment uh, on, on this. That's that's how it works. And we can take a look of other uh, discussions we had for, for the... So if you, if you are not a member yet, uh, I strongly suggest you join. So I can take care of your questions on, on a daily basis. You know, it's a year round class. So for example, this class, I upload all the demos I did from last one. And we also have uh, a recording, you know, for, for, with the uh, four. If you missed anything, you can review here. And uh, this is what I did last time. This is the result of the, the time we did. Pretty good, huh? Yeah. Yeah, it's a small piece. Uh, originally, it's a large screen. So. <laughs> OK, thank you. And uh, someone cannot join, but uh, if you join the network, even you're not signed up for the live session, you can still review it to here. So that's the website. Um, let's go back to this. Uh, okay. Everybody is here, right? I suppose. There, there are 24 people, I think, plus. Uh, Ourself it should be 25 or 26. Um, okay, I'm going to go to speaker view so that you can see. Let me move this. And I'll I'll keep my chat room open so you can type in your questions. Um, please open the um participants window so you can use the nonverbal nonverbal uh icons like uh, go slow or go fast to uh communicate with me i'm going to mute everybody it's just uh, in case you know you forgot to mute yourself so i won't allow you to talk from now and raise your hand you can raise your hand there's a signal you can raise your hand or you can use, uh, I may not be able to want to see your picture. So just uh, type your question or raise your hand. Victoria may be able to help you uh, with your question or request. Okay. All right. Three minutes past. All right. Let me start with a brief introduction to, to the materials we're going to use. Some of you are still new to this uh, media. Let me turn on some maybe already um, advanced, but every time you know we still have to talk about what to, what brush to use. Uh, I constantly explore my my uh, brush collection, you know, and the uh, uh, products line to make it available if I like something. Um, so. We have three basic brushes, and uh, they are uh, here. I think we, ha we, we have a small weasel one. Let me get that. Some uh, people may have a uh, um, question about uh, 
what exactly the weasel, you know, or wolf are. Are they peeled for this? No, they're just traditional category names for different kind of uh, brush. Uh, weasel stands for um, stiff hair or wolf hair because it's a uh, yellow weasel is what the, the Chinese name, yellow wolf, you know. We use that, it's usually brown, so they, they are stiff hair brushes, but these are larger, they, this could be kind of a horse, or, you know, these days they use artificial hair and then just dye the color, so we don't know <laughs> their artificial hair, lots of artificial hair, they, or they just use, you know, um, goat hair and dye it into, into other color sometimes this large brush and this one I, I, I know it's a, it's a uh, hog inside the, we have stiff and a soft soft is like a white when it's brand new this is a brand new soft brush we call it uh, blue hair and arts BHA superwash soft brush um, I'm not I'm not, I'm going to use this later so we have something in between called the combination brush, which has, uh, uh, you know, all these are combination brush too. You can see there's a um, two different kind of color. Uh, one is a white is outside. Uh, it's a made of sheep or goat to hold more moisture and uh, with a stiff core to uh, have the spring, you know. This one has a rabbit hair combination. It's a uh, black and white. This is a, a good one. And this is pure soft. This is pure soft. And this one might be a combination also. Cannot, yeah, it's a combination brush. And this one is a wolf brush. So basically stiff, soft, and something in between. We call it combination. And today uh, we will start with uh, this uh, superwash brush. And we have a new brush. You will um, wash out the glue, and I don't soak it in, in the water for for long. I first of all I squeeze it like this. I squeeze, open it. You can squeeze open. It, they're made of um, seaweed glue. It's not really strong glue, you know. Not not really uh, strong. So you can you can squeeze open it. And uh, you can you can dust off you know some loose hair if any. Just let it. New brush always have a few loose hair. I don't see it. Actually, it's a good quality indication of good quality. But the, it's very common. You have a few loose hair. Um, we call it floating hair. That's there's a, you know even a name for it. So, uh, yeah, see, I don't really see them anyway. That's good. So I, I'll now soak it in, in water completely, but not longer than, you know, maybe half a minute. Even it says soft, you can see how springy it is because nowadays it's more than half of that is artificial. Hair. I cannot tell one by one, but I can tell from this spring. It's stiffer than any wolf hair like 20 years ago. <laughs> you cannot really find the true, uh, pure, uh, non artificial, natural hair uh, brush because the market like this shape. You see, you know, it returns right back to the tip, very sharp. Okay. Sometimes, you know, if you like to. Uh, manipulate it, it can become more and more difficult. So now I adjust the moisture and then I prepare my ink. I already have some ink left over from uh, Victoria's uh, last lesson. And we just put a little bit water to, we call it to uh, maintain or to keep the, the ink fresh. Actually, you cannot really keep it uh, completely fresh. If it's like a hot summer day, you might 
turned bad, but this is okay. We're still not, you know, not 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 too hard here. So um, then I'll grind a little bit before using with the ink stick. If you don't have an ink stick, if you add water, uh, it will dilute it, right? And better to add. Sometimes if you have overnight ink, you might use a little bit uh, peach sap glue to add to the water. Uh, I, I won't put it in this uh, ink stone, but I, I will use it uh, in my, my water supply to uh, resituate maybe, you know, to add some more binding to, to the overnight ink. Otherwise it turned to separate from the the water you know the ink particles tend to separate that's a special effect some 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 artists like it it creates a hard edge in, with the light ink you know give more body kind of. so we we, dilute, we grind it then we um, dilute it so let me just prepare this uh, and this could also help to Control the smearing effect. Uh, I got some something else already in this, so I just put a little bit here. I just need a, a little to the test. It should be like ten percent. You know, I don't. I'm not a science science person, so I just. Estimate maybe they might also have some other uh, glue in it, gelatin maybe because the bag the bag I used, I see some some gelatin crystals here. Anyway, uh, peach sap is not crystal; it's just, it's a powder. So you see, I I use my fingertip to grind. You can use the uh, fingertip to grind pigments and mix them with uh, gelatin or, you know, or, or other glue. So this, this just add a little body, a little volume to the water I'm going to use. I, I, think I can have a comparison here if you don't use it and if you use it on the same paper. Okay, later. So this, this one has a little glue in it. And the paper we're going to use is this kind of paper. It's a uh, unsized shine. Uh, you know, the size is uh, the material called alum, A-L-U-M. Alum is a size, a chemical to seal the absorbency. Then we got a question, can, can the gallery be at the top instead of on the side? Uh, let me see. Gallery. Oh, this is not gallery. It's me. <laughs> it's on top. Somebody is. Uh, so you're, uh, Charlie. You want to, you want to start to the. Speaker view. Spe speaker view. Yeah. Click on speaker view. You will enlarge my, my picture. So. The, uh, the site, the duckling and the me is uh, just a uh, picture in picture. I cannot, uh, I can make it smaller. Let me see. Um, it just disappear. Whoops. Yeah. Oh, okay, here we go. Is this better? Okay, without the duckling. Huh? All right, let me um, let me do some uh, test on the paper. Let me see. I, I have a, a sample pack here. I got all the papers that we carry at our website. Uh, you can get this uh, for a price because I spent a lot of time uh, label each each little piece. We got silk here, and we got all the papers here. Um, you know, if you special interest in some paper, we can just pull out to test for you. But uh, for today's, 
purpose. Let me just use one of these. So I got some uh, single shrine. It's very common kind of uh, paper. Let me get this piece. Yeah, just for, for purpose. The, <coughs> the paper is very absorbent, as I assume. Take a piece of that. Or we can just do this, and double it. So if you put up water on it, you will see it smears. Can you see it? So I usually um, use clean water to test if I don't know what this, I, you know, believe me, I, I don't, if I don't do a test, I, I cannot really tell. Even I do it, it's kind of also difficult to tell different uh, uh, brands. But, you know, when you experience, you will, you'll have more to uh, tell. And there's front side, which is smooth. And the backside has uh, the traces of brushing because when they dry the paper, they put this uh, front uh, smooth side against uh, a, a shiny wall, metal like a steam behind it to, to keep um, dry it. So that's why the shiny part is the shiny side is the front side. Now I, I, um, I'll do the duckling when I do the test. I don't want to just do West the paper. So, so this is the duckling. Let me upload a, a, a file. See, I've never done this before. I'm not sure if it will work. Uh, it's a handout I prepared last night. Forgive me, I cannot send it earlier because I don't want to show what uh, I, I, you know, I was going to use for handout because uh, um, you might develop some uh, mistake already if you don't really, the handout is not to, like a book to be re read, actually to be just use as reference. Let me see where's, oh, the chat. Yeah. Let me see where I can upload the picture. Uh, I mean, I'll upload the uh, file. Does anybody know how to upload a file? Uh, who's doing the Never mind. I never went in. I was. You go chat and attach a file. Okay, thank you. Let me see. Attach file. There is a file button in the chat box. Okay, let me see. I don't see that. Um, my chat box is here, but I don't see the chat. Say no. Okay, merge. I merge the chat with that. Uh, then uh, maybe I can do the that. I hope. Maybe. Okay. Now, what do you think? Where, where did, can you find me? Maybe you have it? I don't have it. Let me see. Oh, participants. Chat box, yeah. I have chat here. File. Down, down, down. 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 Oh, here. Lock, allow, mute, allow, no, no, no. I don't see. Maybe you have it? I have it. Maybe uh, I have to claim host, maybe. Are you host or you host? Let me see. Co host. Um, Victoria has that button. I, I don't. Oh, it's a strange thing. Go share screen. Okay, 
Um, I don't want to share screen because otherwise you, you cannot see me. Let me just use this small reference. I'm, I will upload, I already did in the uh, online class. If you go there, you should be able to find that uh, um, handout I talked about. Okay. First of all, let me introduce uh, this artist named Lo Shu Bai. Let me just write here. Okay, Lo is his last name. Shu means that learned to learn from or learned from. Bai, you know, um, from uh, his master, Qi Bai Shu. This actually was uh, uh, his uh, pen name uh, after he became disciple of Qi Bai Shu. Qi Bai Shu, uh, the grandmaster who did, who does the chick, chick, chicks and the lobster. We did last time lobsters, right? So um, Shu learned from Bai Shu, um, you know, Bai means Qi Bai Shu. Um, so he spent uh, 25 years studied with the master Qi, as you can see in this picture. This was taken in 1936. As Qi Bai Shu, he has developed his trademark uh, subject matters. So in Chinese brush painting, one artist um, can achieve maybe you know one or, or a few subject matters by practice it every day. Like Qi Bai Shu, he's very famous with the lobster and the shrimp we, we studied last time, and uh, also good at uh, chick, little chicks. And his disciple Lo, Master Lo, um, fo focused on his uh, practice on. Uh, this is, by the way, his uh, his chicks. Very, uh, you know, very similar to his uh, teacher, but uh, uh, somehow a little different. Everybody has their own, you know, signature. So he, he's quite, quite realistic compared to Qi Bai Shu to me because he, he indicates a lot of details like the, the wings, the little wings here. Um, then he developed it into ducklings. That's what uh, we're going to learn today. So if you know how to do the chicks, it's not very difficult to learn by analogy, right? By, by um, you, you need to learn one, one thing, like uh, chicks, and then you can do birds, and then you can do herons, and then you can do eagles. You know, it's just uh, um, the same, you know, <laughs> right? Okay, this is some details I, I will show you later. Yeah, this is the handout I was uh, going to upload, but uh, you, maybe you can read this this way. Um, let's see. Master Lo, uh, yeah, become very famous in painting ducklings, and uh, he has a quote. Let's see how. Many. I wish you can read it, but it's kind of difficult. Let me just read it for you. Oops. Okay. Um, yeah, basically, I, you know, regardless of what the, the Tao, you know, the general principles of painting anything, you know, you have to learn from your uh, tradition, from the, um, the natural, from observation. Um, 
the most important thing he mentioned is to use a large brush, believe it or not, he said. The principle is, he says, if you use a large brush to paint or write uh, small characters, uh, it's, it's good. So you, you, you don't have to go back to reload, you know, to break the chi, the breath. Uh, it will not show the thirsty or dry brush coarse uh, strokes. But if you use a small, small brush, um, if you use like this size, you know, to paint a chick, you're in trouble. So, you know, let me show you the, the table here. So, it, you know, just don't use a small brush. You think you're going to have more control. Most people like to tend to use too small. I see a lot of students doing this. So if you use it, you know, this brush maybe is good. But if you could use a, a super wash brush, you know, blow hair around super wash or new new line, um, you you can even do better because you don't have to. You know, I, I did all in one stroke. I don't even reload. You know, just the the eye. I think I did. You can start from the eye with the, the dark, and then you don't have to reload at all. So this is uh, the advice from this. Uh, this handout, okay. I'm. Um, let me see. I. Let me let me upload this uh, from maybe Victoria's. Uh, uh, maybe I got this USB. Which is, I, I'll give it to Victoria so Victoria can upload for me. Victoria. Yeah, sorry about uh, that. Uh, Victoria has just uploaded the this handout to your chat room. Can you download it? Try download it. Oops. Let me see. I don't have this file icon. Only the co-host has. Maybe that's the design. You can download the how to paint doctoring from, from Master Low. Okay. So uh, I don't have to read uh, his, his uh, introduction. All right. Now let's go to next slide. Okay. Yeah, I have given detailed instructions on this. Um, so be, when you are downloading this, I'm I'm keep testing this uh, uh, this this paper and the glues. If you if you are new, you want to uh, give give you know want me to give you some tip that you can you know um, handle this paper, help you to control this smearing. Maybe here here's another one. Yeah, you can put something underneath it. <laughs> that would make it a double shine. Double shine means that uh, you have double layer, you know, like a, li literally stuck two, uh, press the two together. So when you paint, you can go slower because it, it takes more moisture. So it, it, therefore not to smear to uh, like a one layer. 
So if you paint on one layer, you tend to smear faster. If you paint on two layers, that's a, so double shine may help. That's a, another tip. And uh, if I use the, on this palette, I have some glue in it. So I, you know, it make it sticky, right? You can see, so I can feel it, it's a little sticky. Then it will give me, uh, I don't want it too sticky, so the, the brush does not feel um, flow, you know, anymore. So just like 10%, like I said. So if you if you do this, you know, you just use one layer, so you, can, you can compare. So if I do the chick, this, this is with the glue, see, I just, Yeah, this is this is the one with glue, and you can see the stroke is more um, does not move. You know, the water makes maybe, depends on the consistency. The thicker, the less bleed bleed you, you see. And then let me clean this out, and then we just use a we not we don't use any glue, just the water. You can still you need, you need uh, to get rid of extra water before you load always like like this so i i just load with uh, pure water no no glue in it okay so let me put the this to the test. You can see how fast it goes without a, um, without using the peach sap. Yeah, if if I have this, you you will say, oh no no, you know that's but this this uh, give you more control, right? But. The trade-off is uh, this one may look more stiff. This one is more um, natural with the, uh, if you control the wheel, don't let it bleed that much, but with a little bit bleed, it gives you more feathery look, which you cannot do without this paper. That's the big difference. If you, if you don't use this shrine paper, X-U-A-N, raw shrine or unsized shrine or uh, what do you call this? Unsized, uh, absorbent, absorbent shrine. If you don't use absorbent shrine, you use semi-absorbent or non-absorbent, you, you will never get the feathery effect that, that that's the charm of this, uh, this, this kind of painting. So try to appreciate aesthetic of this blur, blurry, um, strokes, you know, especially when you do this small animals or birds, you, you want that. And you can have this, but it, you know, it's not really what I want, but uh, we did that with a fish before, you know, it works pretty good, but still, if you can do without it, I will just use that. And the ink doesn't, does not make it look the same, uh, Fresh, it might have something in it. I don't know. What's the, the uh, let's do another, let's just com complete this. So with uh, more glue. So sometimes, you know, I have to try to <laughs> create the blur just by repeating, repeating because it does not blur, right? If I don't use glue, it just take me one stroke. You know. So just do faster. Another tip to control is go faster. When the brush is dry, go slower. You, instead of reload, uh, you just go slower, slower. At the beginning, if it's too wet, just go faster. But avoid, you know, unless you want it blur, don't don't do it wet into wet. You have to uh, 
you, you can use drying to wet. You can you can you can dry the brush, dry the brush, and then break, you know, into wet. I just exaggerate it so you can see what I mean. Uh, I would not use pure dark because it's just too dark. I will save it for the for the uh, eye maybe. Uh, just let's just say this is wet into wet. Uh, we call we also call it breaking ink, breaking ink. Let me let me show you a little chart. I had this. Uh, let me see where is it? Oh, I didn't have that book. On lesson sixteen, I think I have a page. Let me see. I just share screen. Find that that uh, summary. Let's go to lesson 16. I mean, lesson lessons 59. <laughs> That's the current lesson. Let's go to latest lesson with Terry, right? OK. Yeah. On this uh, handout. Uh, let me, by the way, this is where you get the handout. You don't have to buy. If you take that lesson, just go to the lesson. And then the complete um, handout is here. And you can just click it or uh, use right mouse or command click or whatever um, on Mac to download and save it to your computer. Uh, you can just click open, it will open the PDF file um, like that. So this is the, the work. I think we have a reference page or oh, not in this. Okay, I saw it was handout, but it's on the, in, it's in the, uh, Previous page, okay, here. I saw that already. This is the page I was trying to look. Look at this uh, terminology. You should get familiarized with uh, yourself. Um, but most of this has to do with the so-called gong bi, or the um, elaborated style, or fine line style. Uh, fine line means uh, the uh, contour line. You see this this line. Okay, this this uh, this ink line. This is called a fine line. So you 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 use ink. You use pen pencil then ink to trace them. Uh, this is called a separate wash, which means gradation. We usually use a two separate brush. Terry is very good at that. <laughs> Just like holding one one uh, in one hand. One with water, one with uh, ink or color. A switch back and forth. So you, you, you pull or push the ink to the towards the the edge. So you, you deliver the ink along this. Instead of touching that, you can leave a, uh, a water line. And then you use the second brush to push it. That's called separate wash. And we have glaze, glazing or, or glaze. After this, you can put a, a even a green wash on, on top of that. These are all done with uh, um, the uh, mature shrine. What's it called? The uh, size the shrine. Uh, we call it the show shrine. Let me try to write that. So this is a mature shrine. It is non-absorbent. These are on non-absorbent non paper. These are all on non-absorbent papers. So it's all, almost like a watercolor painting. And you can do flat wash, that's uh, easy to understand. And uh, uh, wet, wet the paper first, then wash to create this kind of uh, misty effect. And here is the blended wash, it means the two colors meet each, uh, each other in, in between. And this one is uh, accumulated, uh, or talashikomi, I think. It's a dropping, dripping technique. Um, you can drip water or drip uh, um, white into color as well. And some dark into light, light into dark, wet into wet, but the, uh, this one you you start from from different different ends. I'm hearing some voice. Where? 
What's that, Tom? We got some leaking roof the other day. We didn't figure out what's exactly happening. Sorry. Um, so wet into wet, dripping, okay. And then uh, we have this, uh, this that, uh, Starting and this uh, uh, filling color. This all have to do with uh, uh, the, the raw, the mature paper. None of this can be achieved on this kind of paper. So this just uh, for your information. I'm not going to demo this, but uh, if you ask me what's the difference, it's really de determined by the material, the technique, yeah. What you want, you have, therefore you have more control on mature paper, but you cannot achieve this kind of effect uh, on the uh, raw paper, I mean, on the mature paper. If you want to paint freestyle, spontaneous style, please uh, make friend with this paper. Or if you like, make friend with your napkins. <laughs> Same thing. You have to practice on, on uh, you know, on maybe hand paper or something. It's, uh, it's a very different uh, kind of paper. All right, let me uh, continue with uh, the ducklings. Okay, ha have you got the handouts? Uh, if I use GOM B, I don't use uh, I don't use the glue. Gumby does not mean glue. Gumby means the size of the paper, not the uh, uh, glue in the in the ink. Okay, to, to make it clear, you have to use the. Uh, I do have Gumby paper, but uh, I'm not supposed to 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 uh, sh to do the demo. That's why I show you the difference. Um, you have to use size the paper for Gumby, the uh, fine line style or detailed elaborated style, all right? Okay, ink is uh, uh, considered as a uh, color in Chinese painting. Although, you know, we, we, we also uh, can use color directly without uh, uh, worry, you know, the pure ink uh, painting, unless you really, want to. So I'm going to use some watercolor. Uh, this is Marie's watercolor I, I got from those uh, dried tube. I, I just resituated, just open the tube and put it in there. Okay. All right. okay. And uh, for the darklings, let me just clean this. We can use uh, some yellow, some uh, uh, we got we got this yellow, beautiful yellow called duckling, duckling yellow. I'm gonna I'm gonna try this, but uh, let me just paint pure ink to start with. But we do have to use a little bit color for the beak, the duck beak and the, the feet, the very cute feet. So I got some vermilion here. And you can mix a little yellow, I think, maybe. Does that help? Make it more orange. Okay, the first, first um, stroke, you don't have to start from the head, but uh, for many, uh, especially this profile gesture, uh, the side view, you, you, it's better to, to start from the, the head or the beak. So that, that we all know that duck has this kind of flat, flat um, top. You know, the is is flat beak, right? On top, 
as on the side view, you might just see a long prolonged uh, chai lang girder. And then you put a long stroke like so. So this is the top, this is the side, the, the lower part of the beak. Let me do it again. I will do three in a row, maybe. Let me just uh, move on to. So this is the target. Um, so I'll just do like that. And, you know, as I move on, I will feel more comfortable with this paper. At the beginning, you know, it might get smeared, but uh, when the brush gets drier, you, you might have to reload. So it's uh, it's all depends on how you're familiar with it. You know, you can um, you can paint faster than you can load more. So if you have to go slow, you you, you can make the the brush drier and give you more time. You know, you can do it very and all thicker paints. So it's all has to do with all the, the elements, you know, the speed, the thickness, or you can put the glue in it. Just use dryer, um, dryer brush. Okay, so notice the, the curve, this, this line is, is like a, so, this this is first stroke, then the second stroke. And there's a curve. Okay. Look at uh, the cute, smiling. Okay. And uh, I think I should have used a smaller brush. This is what I would intend it to do. So you can use a small. Uh, this is called heavy dot, or you can use uh, uh, just the the uh, uh, basic whistle brush maybe for for this beak. Let me clean this up. I definitely need this brush for the body, so let me just clean this up. I always like to try new brush. You could you could do the whole thing with it, but you have to wash out the color just like the, like I I did, and then I got some gray, just touch a little dark here. All right, so this should be a dark gray. Maybe uh, if we have five grades from very dark to very light. This is very dark, but not, not the darkest. We save that for the, the, the pupil. Okay, now um, you, you need to do a triangular uh, head. It's also a triangular shape. You can do it in two strokes, just like the dot we did uh, with a uh, uh, calligraphy or the chicken chick head. Here's the advice: if you don't, if you're not sure if you load enough or you know the color in your brush, just try with a waste paper or just like uh, the test the test paper I had. This is very important. You can use this for blotting also. That will that will stop smearing immediately. Something I, I showed you how to do in my first uh, lesson with uh, goldfish, right? A couple of weeks ago. You don't have to make it really dark, like the handout has uh, exaggerated the grade. I think it's, uh, it should be a little lighter than that. So let's do just like this, should be fine. And we should. You know, we, we, we have to leave some room for the eye. So this is just like that. All right. Now I, I'll continue with the same brush to do the neck. The neck is foamy and also flexible. So it has much to do with the 
the movement, the gesture of the duckling. Um, and I noticed the back line is more smooth. So I just make a like a C, opposite C curve. If not enough, you can just make it up a little bit and end. And it could be different directions, but uh, let me just do a simple one, just a little curve like that. And then continue to the, now you see my brush gets lighter because I didn't load more than one third maybe. But if it's too little, it, it gets light too early. So you want to estimate that. So I don't have to reload, just keep going. That's the best. So uh, much to do with how you load the amount of loading and you have to develop uh, this uh, uh, experience with uh, practice. So we just continue to do the, um, what they call that, there's a term I forgot, uh, the chest, I'll call just the chest, or the, the, it's not, I think there's a keep, uh, what's the keel, just like the very bottom line of the, the vessel, of boat. Yeah, just indicate that, and go along the, the, that line, just like this, this line, you know, here. And then uh, continue. So my brush gets dry and I just kind of turns back to do some uh, sweeping uh, for the tail, okay? And you can see this paper is magic that you can, you can it shows the, shows all the mistakes, also the good, you know, good ones. So you can it record your, your, all your movement. See that that's that's the beauty of this this paper. Now um, I add a little dark back to the tip without blend, and then uh, dot the wings. It's near the. It's like the shoulder. Just the it's underdeveloped. You know, not not develop, fully developed. So just the, the shoulder. You you can have little, but you cannot really. Um, have that flying white. It, it, it's nice if you paint, you know, very fast, you will have some dryness. So it has like a movement, indicate the, the kind of movement, dancing movement. But uh, if you didn't get it, that's it. You know, don't try to, don't try too hard to get little things like that. But concentrate on the placement of the stroke, the sh two shoulders, right? Um, now we go back to the orange color. Let me do a complete one here. Maybe you didn't follow, so you have a chance to follow me. I, I'll use the stiff brush. You can use the basic stiff brush or heavy dot, or you can use uh, just any brush, you know, like the combination brush. It can also work. And I mix a little vermilion. I mean, it's a very opaque color, very uh, opaque color. And you can have a little, just vary a little bit with the yellow. And just repeat this. Okay, let me do a larger one so you can see. Something like that, right? Am I right? Yeah, just this a little bit thicker. This. It shouldn't be very long, like the beak of the chick. You want to keep it cute, like that. And I, uh, now just extend that triangular shape, you know, from just like, like ones, two, to make it up. And then goes like that. It goes down, all the way down, and just use all the brush, all the pens in my brush. Now it's very dry. I need to, but without adding too much, that way it will make it too wet for the wings. Just continue that 
you know, just like some some uh, suggestion of the tail. Now I add a little dark. And then you can, um, yeah, here is this. If, it, if something missing in between the, the tail and the, just very suggestively use the side of the brush, just sweep a little, try brush suggest the other side of the, the back to fill in that. You know, on, on some uh, print, you don't even see that. Uh, it could be void, just like highlight, you know. So each each um, duck is different. Okay, oh, sorry. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to add the leg. Okay. The Go back to this red brush. You can add a little more. And uh, you may mute it a little bit because I want to make it a little grayer. Just a little bit ink, maybe. Just a little ink. And uh, just a little suggestion of the upper neck and then the joint. And then um, you have to combine the the feel of the gravity center and the, the uh, uh, gesture. Okay, but here's the thing. You, uh, you said the instruction says you want to keep the toe. Actually, there are toes. You know, in, in between the web. This is the, this. Is the, you can omit that rail toe. I, I don't know what it's called. Um, you can. If it's a chicken, it, it will be like that, right? So this tool towards the center, towards the center, and uh, it's inward to make it cute, not not the other side. So and then just fill in the middle, or you can just make it more like a, a web, you know, the swimming pitch like that. Okay, uh, that when it's dry enough, it dot to the eye. Okay, let me do this one also. I think you, you might also try to dilute it because we want to have this maybe lighter than that. That's also another way to separate, you know. So this would be lighter. And uh, you can just make, okay, just connect. This is a little bit tr tricky. The perspective, the rare one is uh, more suggested, not uh, as, uh, um, this front one. Okay, let me do another one since you, you didn't see. Sorry about that camera off focus. So this is a, another one. <laughs> Start from the front, it goes uh, up and then a curve under it. And uh, using dark gray to complete, just like that. The side is brush stroke. You see, this is a dark. And leave some space for the eye, this white space for the eye. And then this jar, jar part. And then uh, If you load enough, you should, should not reload after each one. And then just go curve. This is too thin, you can make it up immediately. If you, if you wait too long, then you add it, you will 
it will show. Okay. Just press the, the whole brush about that. And then just use the the side of the brush to and a sweep sweep a little bit for the tail. Dry brush, yeah. And the the wings are near the front, not 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 here. Okay, I think many people when you paint the cheeks, you put the wings too behind. You should be out on the shoulder. It's a very uh, underdeveloped. You know, like uh, just just a little bit. Fine. I try to repeat, that's a, not a good habit, but uh, sometimes you have to. Uh, okay, <clears throat> the, the feet, the webbed feet. I draw this. Uh, there's bones, and then I just kind of combine them. So if you have done the chicks, it's not very different, right? Don't worry about the smear. I, I sometimes I just want more, so I. Um, okay. Add. But make sure it's very light, it's almost just water to make a, if something missing, you know, but if it's already suggested, you don't have to, uh, you can keep absence of the stroke. All right. Let me monitor my screen so I, I can keep it. Is there's time delay on the Zoom. All right. How are you doing with uh, your dark darklings so far? Uh, I'm going to do the swim, swimming ones later. Oh, great. Let me take a look. Let me enlarge you, Terry. Uh, let me see. Oh, OK. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah you're getting more controlled, more and more controlled. Some uh, wet stroke could be a little less. Uh, the the shape of the the beak is the problem. Let me let me outline it uh, like I did here. So one is like here, short shorter than the second one. Okay, this is stroke line number one. Let me separate them with different colors. For you to see it, and then I I draw a document. So this is this number two, and what you did is like this. It's more like a that that's that's wrong. Do this. Okay. Okay. Here. All right. Can you see the, the the difference? Yeah, if you if you draw this lower part too, too short, it, it become a different bird. Too long, yeah. Keep it short. Let me show you the picture, the real duck picture. It's like the white duck. I think we have that. Uh, this is the feet. Okay. You don't have to do the the back toe or the thumb. I don't know what's the name of it. Yeah, just do the front, just like that. See how how they they work like that, inward direction. Yeah, this is a, the uh, yeah. We can we can try to do this one. This is from the master. Um, I I will do a complete painting with these two next. Okay. Any any others want to show you? Please. Okay, very good. 
Yeah, yeah, that's uh, uh, Susan. Susan, you did very good. Yeah, that the wings could be a little in the front. Yeah, uh, so yeah, yeah. I think so yeah, your chick look like a duck, so you shouldn't have any problem. <laughs> Your chick, I remember, they have the long, long body like ducks. Yeah. Okay. Great. So everybody doing okay. All right. Yeah. I see Anna. Anna, your your chick maybe uh, look like a, a dodge for some reason, uh, or like teenagers. <laughs> Could be a little smaller. Uh, the body maybe um, yeah too too large maybe the wing part to be less. Okay. Uh, Tao, yeah, your, uh, I know you have a question about controlling the paper. Do you feel better after this practice? Do you feel in love with that? I hope you like the raw paper now. Um, uh, Kao, very good. Yeah, the wing could be smaller. This is, this is new, two wings maybe combined become a, 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 a large duck. So yeah, Louis, very good, yeah. Try to, uh, I think the, the a comma, a comma, maybe I didn't do it right. There are two wings here. Let's do one and two, just keep it small. Not, yeah, I think maybe I made it to look like a, a big uh, side view of opening wing, flying wing. Actually, they don't fly yet. It, you can see the little, uh, let me show you the, yeah, see, there's no wing, just uh, this this uh, little hint, like this, bit, a little dark. Um, maybe this is still, I don't know how, how many weeks, the wing will start to grow from there. So no flying feather yet, yeah. yeah you can see, oh, they, actually, you can see on, on this one, they're starting to fly, a little wing, very cute. Uh, yeah, just make it like angel wings, you know what I mean? <laughs> like a, no feather, just the, the, the angels kind of, yeah. Like angels wing, very, just on the shoulder, on, on the shoulder, yeah. I understand? All right. Let me, let me try to do this one. Uh, I will make uh, that spider into a bee, maybe. <laughs> okay. Do you have a... Let me see, 40 minutes. So we, we, we'll do a complete painting. We can, we can make it to, into a uh, horizontal, horizontal one without uh, the string, the hanging string of the spider. We can do this. It's a little more room for, for the paper to show. Okay, let me see my width. So I can I hope you can see the whole thing. Okay. All right, I think now it's all covered, all right? For some reason I think this even for the beak I will use uh, Maybe a regular size brush, the combination brush. So I don't have to reload all the time. Oh, yes. Good question, Susan. Uh, I, I was trying to wait it later, but if you use very thick, very dark ink, you could do it without a blurry, I think. Let's try. Let's just try an arrow, see if it's too early to do that. You can use a, a smaller brush, maybe. This, this is stiff landscape brush is among the top, uh, I mean, basic three, basic five, the landscape brush, stiff whisker landscape brush. This is a, I soak it first and then I load pure ink. Just pure, pure ink. Very, very dry. And uh, 
Let's see. This one is early, so we can try this here. Yeah, it's a little above the uh, the center line of the the lower line of the mouth. So it's, it's right there. It's just the, like every other bird, right here. I can. And, Got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, use pure ink. You have to make sure the ink is pure and pure, and then you can grind it, or you can use uh, the um, you know this guy the the convenient ink. You know, get all get the very dark from it. This one, yeah, just. Start on, on the wet. You, um, by the way, if you if it's completely dry, it's not good. It will be stiff. So you have to wait to the moment where it's not going to smear, but uh, not completely dry. So it, it will blend into the gray, right? It should be. Sometimes you cannot see from the camera, but it's there. And if you if you turn it over. You can see it even clearer. And I should got a little more. You see, if it's too dry, it will not penetrate through. So it's on the surface. It should it should be you should be able to tell, you know, on the other side. This is too dry. So that's why it's not good, you know. When when the when this is too dry, it's 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 like a Paste it on it, like a stick on it, not not to blend it into it. Yeah. So you, you should do it when it's uh, like a um, still damp, moist, still moist or damp. All right. Thanks for the question. Okay, I'll I'll do the the beak again. This is the uh, seems to be. Uh, but you can see this painting actually could be a copy, not the original, because I can see the beak is not quite right. It could be a, a fake, because uh, you know, on internet, it's, uh, and you can see the, the, it's different than this one. So this one could also be a fake, because the, the beak is so curvy, it does not have that, that triangular shape. Um, yeah, this is this is what we're looking for. I, I think we should have a two original. Let me see. Yeah, I think some some handout is a little misleading. So that's why. But it could be stylized. You can start to create your own style. You know, the big heart could be more personalized. But uh, I try to follow the handout. From the master, so this is how we do it. So you can maybe simplify it later, just into a one curve stroke. stroke. But I think, um, yeah, this is a, what should be. So basically, a little triangle. Very, it's like a, uh, a dot to the opposite direction. You know, the, the drop, the drop of water thing. Then um, a curved dash to, to hold the bottom. This could be combined together. Yeah, so this two overlaps yeah, in, the, in the front, right? I think that's, that's how it, it's done. And you can combine the two strokes, overlap the two strokes. One, two. And this line, the center line or the bottom line, could be a little longer, and that you know to uh, align with the eye and, and above it. This is a. Let me if if I put the eye, uh, you will see what I mean. I think that's that's about it. Oh, actually. Start, you know, when you start anything, uh, you should do this kind of uh, stroke guide in, the, in your mind. You, know, you, you can use pencil maybe 
you can draw or something like that. And then, so I will draw the stroke, like draw out. This is one stroke. This 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 will be one stroke, and this is another stroke. And I leave a little um, white. Maybe you don't have to leave the complete circle in white, but uh, the eye could overlap on that. But uh, this is basically the stroke. Mm. So this is another stroke. Then the the neck stroke, like that. Let me just do a shade, just like uh, my pencil drawing, <laughs> okay, for you to, to understand. You can draw with pencil if you want, like, like that. Any, any thoughts? So let's... This three also good. Uh, Left-handed person, right? Um, yeah, you, you 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 know you can reverse. You can do a mirror image. So, um, I I don't I don't think uh, it's you know. You have to maybe adapt to, just like you're writing, you have to, to uh, we, you know, I, I can do another way. So maybe it simulates your movement, but I use the right hand, uh, but I can, I can just mirror it for you to, to see. Okay, let me see if I can do that. So if I just mirror it, okay. So I'm going to mirror this image, uh, Cassie, for you. Look at, uh, so I'm right-handed, but I do it the opposite way. So in this composition, I will think about, you know, the proportion first, so I know how, how big it will be. So yeah, you, you, can, you, you can go back and forth if not enough, one, one stroke is not enough. And just, you know, yeah, I, I can see what you mean. I can not really see my hand when I sometimes, but it's okay, you have to trust your hand. And uh, just uh, think about triangle all the time. Yeah, that helps. So this is the, uh, oops, I got a drop of water. We'll figure that out. Okay, now um, I'll do this uh, body thing. And uh, well, it see, this is how I control smear. If it's, uh, it starts to smear, I just blot, blot it. And uh, you, can, you can use side brush or you can just use a tip con uh, centered stroke. If it's big enough, you don't have to use the side, you know, just Show, show the opposite of the, like that. And then just, okay, I, I covered that. Put up there. All right. And then just make up the wings. The little angel, angel, angel wings. You don't have to do it fast. You know, when the brush is dry, you can go very slow. And I can just use the bottom of the brush to make it up a little bit. And you can you can still change if you know um, you know if the brush is, is uh, dry enough or wet or whatever. You feel uh, you can still add it. If you just add it. And, uh, I, I think that for me, this part is really a challenge. I, I never got it right. My feet tend to be too big. I think let me try to this is a 
nice shape. I like. It's like a little diamond, or just, just you know, as simple as that, like that, a side view. Right, and I, I like the 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 uh, muted to color on the handout. So let me just add a little bit yellow. This one, I, I'll make this one lighter. So we just make different, you know, uh, this one darker, this one to be lighter. Just, uh, and this one is behind. Right? So I'll make this little taller, just slightly. They're in the same height, so they're not much different. Okay, this is the, the first stroke. And then I make this curve line. Like that, that's the dark beak. And I just will add water to to this without adding ink. See what happens. I need to do it like that. I think this is a fake. See how soft that neck is? No bone in it. <laughs> Master should do that. <laughs> but I just scratch a little bit. Okay, a little bit dark with then touch a little water without blending. Shoulder. Just and the, I see a little bit uh, like a thigh, but I don't know where it come from. It's, it, maybe it's just a, a accident. You know, you don't have to make it clear. But I like to to think about that way. And then this 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 uh, really in the rainy uh, movement. Just a kind of one stroke, ready, ready style. <laughs> okay. You can make this uh, wing a little bit like contrast more. You can still add a little dark. Oh, it's, I tried, you know, to change but not too too much at this point. Just a little dry and the dark contrast. Give a little definition here and there. That's all. The one is a little steel then uh, but excited this one is uh, really launch uh, to chase something in the air, which is a bee. Okay. I promise uh, Terry we we we'll, we'll try to incorporate to some but uh, we can add maybe, uh, yeah, we should just do that. I, I was thinking some flower, but we don't have much room. So we just do a B. I usually start with the dry, uh, you know, the bumblebee is the body, just like that. Just the, the oval shape. It could be large, but I try to do it to like the wasp. The wasp has this little long uh, west, kind of the two two parts of the body. And you can draw a little bit color variation, like the orange, and you can even start to draw this kind of uh, stripes. But usually they do it in black. I try to avoid too much black. Um, I do have to do the black hair. Okay, let me focus on this one so you can see. <laughs> this is my head. This is the, the body, right? 
now I just use, uh, um, let's see, we, we do a semi, semi, uh, front hand and semi combi. So just, just like my teacher would do, just draw this four wings with light. Light gray. Yeah. It don't have to be the exact same size. You know. Just free, and you know, semi free. And then you can draw a little dark shape, like uh, near the the end of the wing, wet into wet, just a little bit blurry there. Yeah. And then with the uh, this detail brush, you can use uh, even smaller, the tiny little brush, you know, we have in our store it would be good to do this, uh, this kind of thing. And I'll, I'll start with the head. Two dashes, one short, one small, and then the, the back hair, kind of, and then antenna, and then four, four legs, and then the rear leg, it's very hairy. You can have like a short thing on it and then a fit a dot, just like that. And I don't do the mouth, I don't think either or something. Just just like that. And some like you know, some people like to do this part very dark. Uh, I just keep it light. And you can also just use ink to to do this uh, these stripes. Just that's that's it. Let me see. Oops, I cannot find it. All right. Let me show you the whole picture, okay. Oh, the eye, you need to wait until it almost, uh, still damp, but not completely dry. So you can use your, your palm to feel it. If it's still wet, wait a little more a little longer. And uh, uh, another thing is you, you just want to make it uh, ink very, uh, very pure. You can use uh, this ink, just, uh, you know, use, use the liquid ink and get some uh, solid ink into it. So you can build up on the on the paper. Let me show you. Um, I don't have that little white, really cute uh, highlight, but I think it's uh, it's some. Uh, I don't know if it's, it's common in, in the past. So this is something make me think it's a contemporary. It's too. You know, you, I, you know, I, if I had to save that white, I would rather use gouache or the white to just paint it. Oh, it has a highlight. That's not, uh, I think that would be nice. It really, I, I really like that highlight in the eye. Let me enlarge it so you can see. See that little expression there? It's so dramatic. The white, beautiful, I mean, what is it called? I find this, it has a little highlight, saved highlight. You cannot really do it. No matter who did it, it could be better than the original. You know? So we don't really, met, uh, for us, it's a study to, you know, just reference for, for this. I try to save the light. And maybe with that, it's white enhance that. But I think just didn't happen. 
forget about the highlight and everything. They <laughs> just just that that it simply too big. But it's kind of cute to have large eye, right? You can save a little highlight if you, if, you, if it happens, you know. I had to use white on the on the ink, it makes it look like a too. Um, but I do have a little um, kind of uh, white or gray in there. I think if you look at the back, maybe it's clear. Even more clear. All right. Um, I think this painting uh, also had some uh, some amber in it. The amber has glue, you know, with it, especially the chip. So it, 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 it makes the ink less smearing and also add a, a warm gray to it. And we can, we can just add whatever here left to it. Just like that, so make this a little warmer. That's the best I can do. Where do you think I should sign? Uh, I think it could be here, but uh, not sure. Yeah, I think maybe that's the only place maybe on this corner somewhere. Uh, you could just write a short, you know, like a name. I'll put a steel under that. All right, that, that completes uh, this uh, stock project. Um, you can experiment later, you know, with uh, the swimming one. Um, let me show you. You can just paint uh, with very light orange and maybe even wash a little bit of water with a uh, um, greenish blue. Um, just make it, you know, to feel like swimming. It's a little bit more advanced. I, I won't do it uh, here. Maybe we can discuss that after the class. Um, we, I also have more complete painting on the handout. You can you can do four darklings. Uh, one one with uh, yellow. Should I do a yellow one? I, I I'm very curious. Do we have time? Let me see. Five. Five or seven. Let's, uh, let's just do a quick, 
click one. So it's all just hands without talking. Maybe you can, you can squeeze in a yellow one. So let me just use yellow, a little duckling yellow, that's what uh, it's called. And then just, um, let me see. The, the mouth or the, the beak is, is still uh, the same. So like that, just like that. Yeah, I hold the brush like a pen sometimes. It's okay, but it's all okay. As long as you can, you can do it, you know. You don't have to do it just in one position, but um, it's, it helps to do, if you, if you hold the brush correctly, you, 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 can, you can have, just like uh, you don't have to stick with the right hand, you can do it in all eight directions, what they call it. Yeah. So don't try to copy uh, because when, when I see something nice, you know, this is uh, a nice tail, and I, 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 I don't really want to make it that, uh, like, a, you know, exactly like the sample. So um, this one doesn't have this the flying movement, the, the, the wings doesn't show. So I just basically avoid that. So you can you can add a little color change, maybe just a little warm color on the uh, shoulder to suggest suggest the wing, maybe and that's all. All right. Or you can add a little ink. Actually, this is too warm. All right. And uh, I just realized I'm using a small brush. A uh, small brush sometimes, you know, give beginners uh, uh, more control, but you have to go back and forth to the palette often. And then you do a uh, ink one. I still have this. Okay, just uh, let's just do pure ink. I'm thinking to add some blue <laughs> or gray. We just do a dark ink. So, uh, so just follow this sequence. You, you can, you know, I accidentally, I just start, what about starting from the bottom? That's okay, you know, just add to the top, right? Nothing wrong with that, right? As long as you, you get that done, you can, you can reverse that. And then I try to do, uh, behind. So remember this paper has a magic, it avoids to, if I just paint on that, on that, sometimes, you know, it, it just, a good paper would void overlapping, just goes behind the first stroke. That's the beauty of this kind of paper. You can see that happening from here. It's still cut because my, my ink is a little too strong, but uh, it's a blur area, that's good. And then just do a third one. Notice that um, pattern, so two close, one separate. So the beak uh, has a pattern. And, you know, you can just make it easy. I think a lot of simulate, simulation or fake, you may call it, just simplify this, this beak from the, uh, the handout. Maybe later he did this, who knows. So uh, even the artist himself will evolve over time and uh, his technique getting, getting easier and easier. Sometimes that's the trend, you know. The, so this is the, the dark. I just add a little dark for the wing. Still not Keep the wings done. Is the suggestion? I didn't have the overlap. It's the upper one, but that's okay. You don't have to copy exactly. Is the idea. okay? Now this this one is a little different. You know what? I would start from the. This one I don't do the beak first. I certainly would do this neck, or even this wings first. You know the back view like we, we always do with the, the bird. Uh, let me see. 
Make that really dark. It's interesting, they are looking in the same direction. I was thinking they talk to each other. You can make your own story if you want. You don't have to be the same. And then I just indicate that uh, with a little suggest, suggestion of the beak. You can make the head a little larger than the neck. That that one on the handouts, I think it's not very good with that one. The, the head is too small. We need to change that. I can, okay, now I dilute the Okay, okay. Dilute the um, orange color. It's interesting. I'll try to simplify now. I, I think. Okay, now. Uh, my feet always oh, big. Some said my I have a big feet, <laughs> so you, you that can look like you. I wear four, 45 shoes. <laughs> forty five shoes. Okay, that's my foot. I certainly like this uh, small feet. If you could make it smaller, it would be nice. All right, now let's just start the eye with a dark, and just there. You don't have to be round, you know, just. More personal eyes. Okay. How do you like that? It's only uh, one with color. Yeah, try to make your own story. It, it could have willows or some kind of uh, uh, environment. I like this little fence. Uh, it feels like safe, uh, like a domestic. Okay, let me let me just use this big brush. Add something like that. It's like bamboo fence. Uh, we can use uh, it's dried bamboo, so we just use this uh, leftover the orange color with leftover. Ink. And I'll just draw this. With a rhythm, you know. In perspective. Overlapping create uh, distance as well. This goes into voids. Yeah, um, willow tree could be added. Something. You can draw the outline first, or you can draw it later. You just do it more free first. It's just like a, you know, some some people said uh, if you don't paint the bamboo correct, it's like a willow. This is how I do the willow, just like a soft stroke for the bamboo, the same kind of uh, 
stråk för att ta upp det. Yeah, I think it might be too heavy to, to draw these lines, like uh, the outlines. Uh, so you can just draw the center of the, 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 the ring of the, some indicator. Just give a little, little depth of uh, the definition. Maybe. You don't have to draw the contour. Not uh, just sign it. So it takes me ten minutes to do this. <laughs> Okay, uh, so that completes uh, the darklings. Let's see if any questions. Okay, if someone has to leave. Yeah, it will be a rec uh, recording available right after this. If you missed anything, you have to leave earlier after, feel free. Okay. All right, let's uh, go to the next uh, agenda. You can take a quick break anytime if you want to. Uh, let me... Since we, we have done this uh, duck, I think it's logic to um, do the strike, sh strike, right? Because uh, it's, uh, it's more related to the birds or the duck. Let me go out. Let's see. And then we will do landscape. That's good. Okay. Um, okay, here we go. Now here's the famous uh, painting by a Japanese master, um, Murashi. I think. Uh, uh, in 16th century or something like that. The, uh, early style. And I will do some uh, um, demo with the birds. Then we'll work on the complete painting, okay? Let me enlarge it. Okay, let me close this. Uh, not very clear. Let's see. Okay, this one or this one. This one is good. All right. Let me enlarge this bird. Do you know this bird called the shrike? S H R I K E. Um, I had. I have painted this bird uh, when I was young uh, with my teacher. Actually, I had paintings uh, from him. Um, he taught me that uh, this bird is a uh, praying, praying bird. He, so it's a uh, like an eagle, you know, a falcon family. 
So it, it has a strong, powerful mouth. I don't think you can see that. Let me see. It's very um, much like an eagle with a hook in the end. Yeah, let me let me do a, uh, some uh, demo here. I think the the um, uh, belly is white, and uh, there's some kind of gray, uh, blue, blue, bluish, uh, bluish on the crown. If I do it in color, it will be like this. It will be something like blue head, very light, pale blue, and then just uh, the purplish, uh, you know, like a uh, gray body. I'll just do it. I use a soft brush. You can use a very uh, middle, you know, like a mixed, uh, mixed brush or the uh, combination brush. Something like that, and then the 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 uh, wing, uh, tail. The tail is uh, also this kind of color. I think the purplish color and very long, long long tail. And something like that. This is the tail, and then oh, the. The front is uh, the chest. We usually have two different, you know, colors. We usually, um, the front is lighter. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me do the wings first. This is ink. This is my teacher's style. More Less. I try to, to combine the two. So this, this is like three overlapping strokes for the, for the wing. This could be, they, they, they might have some padding, some white in it. Right? Dry brush, basically. Okay, now I need to dilute the ink. Just use this. And then I draw the uh, light ink outline. You can you can use a uh, light, like a you know gray maybe also, with, even use white, something like that. This light indicates the white feather. And then um, the face. So we, we use this small brush with uh, ink. So this is the the part that. Uh, makes different the beak is like with this eagle it's like a small eagle you know and it has long uh, hair nest or nose hair it has this beak but I, I think that it cannot be over exaggerated but it has little hook you know to be Faithful to the actual bird, it has. You have to wait to try. Maybe you can start from the eye, then uh, it will blur less. Even you touch it, you know. so that's something we we can consider later doing it. There's mark behind the eye. I, I try to. Draw that first, blend into the, the wet. And then the eye should be there. I wait it dry. And these are the hair, the long hair around the nose. And I need to wait it dry. And this is the leg and the claw. Okay, here is another oh, the, the, the side of what they call it. And then the 
code front and back. That's it. Okay. Yeah, I think that the, this, if it's too wet, you will certainly blur. That's why um, procedure is important. You like you do the eye first if you really want, but or you can just wait. It, takes, it just takes some time. Let me just wait. <laughs> the branch is after the bird, so it's behind, right? Let me show you the picture, the whole. This is still a, not a, the whole picture. Yeah, this is the, still not the whole picture, but uh, you can see that. Uh, so I will think the branch is it's not necessary from one, you know, in the bottom all the way down, uh, all the way up. It could be starting from here down and uh, then connect in between from bottom up. Something like that. But I, I'll just do it to this way. And notice where does the branch start is very uh, important. Uh, it's not in the middle, it's on, on the side. Okay. And there's a worm, a little worm on the branch because this branch is so long on the original scroll. I'm going to do it on the scroll later. So it's almost straight, uh, but it has a, a little angle. Shoot, that's, and it's very calligraphic. I think the paper is uh, semi-sized because um, in that time, this kind of paper is not exist. It's, it's only a contemporary development. In, like after Chibashu, the shrimp artist, it becomes so popular with this wallpaper. Before this, it, it, it's semi size, I think, most time. And uh, you can even overlap some. It's not, it's not hold. You can take more than one. So let me do the eye. I cannot really see it. Let me see if I can. Oh, yeah. The, I think I don't really get it. I have to do not copy, you know, just do my own. But when you try to do something, you cannot even Read. I can copy something you don't really see. I, I think it, it, it might work. So you have to rely on the knowledge. Let me show you my teacher's uh, book. And this is a Xie um, Yi style of water, I mean, <laughs> uh, flower and a bird's painting method. Uh, in this book, he categorized all the subject matters uh, into flowers and leaves, uh, different kind of flowers, leaves. I think there's chapter, oh, okay, here we go, on birds. So we can take a look at what he says. So all different kind of parts. Uh, we talk about two kind of birds. One is uh, vegetarian. Uh, look like this, or maybe they are warm eaters, not uh, vegetarian, uh, just common, kind of. The other one, they are prayer, they eat other birds, maybe, like an eagle. And uh, one of them is a shrike, you know, they have this, this, this little hook. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, this is the eagle or falcon, but uh, that's the difference. Okay, if you paint the Try to be like this. It doesn't look like a. You see the the eye difference. That's what I'm looking for. So this is more rounded, like hummingbirds. You know, the kind of small birds. This one has the eyelid like a uh, covering the pupil from top. Sorry. 
Oh, this is my teacher. Oh, if you don't don't know my teacher, let me uh, just type Zhang Zhuyi. Huh? Yeah, I cannot type my, my keyboard. Huh? Yeah. The, okay, this book actually uh, is out of print. It's no way you can find it. Uh, you can see this, this is a very old book. It's a joint work by two professors. Uh, the, the text is by Yang Jianhou in 1978, the, uh, June in, in 19. And uh, all the illustration is done by my, my own teacher, uh, Zhang Zhenyi, Master Zhang. Uh, I have lots of uh, his originals, but you can see, you can recognize, recognize his style. It's the, this from this color pictures, right? He's got all the flowers. What I can do if in the future is I can go through his teaching samples I have, and also this, you know, according to this book, you know, to, to open the class on flowers and birds with uh, Master John. Um, so you can see in color this different bird's head that's, that we talked about. Eagle is right there, the chicken, the you know, small bird. Uh, so, parrots. Yeah, different ways of painting the feather, like the ancient ways, or just uh, more contemporary, this is uh, Shanghai school style. Like that. I, I tried to find that bird we, we were doing. Uh, sparrows, something like uh, they don't have um, they don't have the hummingbirds, but the, this one is uh, sparrows, right? Or the chick that we did, right? Chick and uh, some other. Uh, yeah, Macbe, Macbe's the uh, crow and the uh, peasant. Passage, passage. Oh, this is a duck. If you want to see how to do the adult, adult uh, duck, here is an example from my teacher. Okay. Um, yeah, the eagle, the chicken, uh, the the rooster, and the um, hens, uh, fish, goldfish, lobs, uh, crab, that can. Or oh, the bee here, he, he, he does the bee like this. I don't, I don't think this is a typical his. Um, but he, yeah, he occasionally would do this bumblebees kind of style. Yeah. And the butterfly. Some, uh, oh, this is cicada, 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 cicada. Yeah. And uh, some different uh, bugs, fruits, that kind of thing. So, Let's go back to the, the bird section. We want to point out to the the, the cause. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, here, here is. So um, the bird's eyes, like the all the 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 praying birds, like this. So I I, I will do the bird's eye like that for this shrike. I think it does look like that in the example. And these, you know, the, the, the eyebrow flat and, and top, not rounded. And the, uh, this is the duck webbed feet that we just did, but in outline form. So we, we need to understand, so then we can do uh, in freestyle. There's bone in the middle, like the toes, you know, and then the web, the chicken, the different uh, crayons and something like that. And this is how you do it in freestyle. This is more like semi gumbi or gumbi style. Semi gumbi style. This is a freestyle. And here I talk about the, the tail. This this tail that we did is long tail, like that. And some with a short flat, some with a swallow kind of. Okay. Uh, is this a, we, we don't do the flying feathers. Oh, on this branch, this is a uh, 
Musashi. Last name is Musashi. Maybe Keio, can you can you tell us uh, the first name? Musashi's first name. This the author of the artist uh, who did this famous uh, art. Let me see. Maybe I have uh, information. I think I didn't write the first name. I, I do know the Musashi is the last name of this uh, artist. Oh, uh, Miyamoto Musashi. Miyamoto Musashi. Miyamoto Musashi. Miyamoto Musashi. Let me just write it in, in English. I don't know how, how to write the kanji, but uh, I can spell it. Miyamoto is a national treasure. You, you can find find in on art history books in, about Japan his, uh, art history. Musashi. Miyamoto Musashi is a uh, um, strike on a bearing tree. Strike in a bearing tree. Okay. Let me give you the whole uh, black white picture. I, I sometimes, sometimes when I copy, I want to see a, just the essence of it. it. I don't have to see the color, you know, that kind of, I just need to see the composition. And from this black and white copy, I see um, the, the uh, striking, uh, you know, the, the space, uh, dividing up the space with uh, this uh, single branch, basically into you know, third, maybe, actually not half and half, but somewhere, you yeah. know. And then just on the corner of this, uh, this lower left, to the, this mountain or rock and a horizon even. There's a very little small um, suggestion of landscape. It has this, um, uh, let me practice a little bit this tree, this tree branches. So you don't want to make it too um, fussy, but uh, it has this kind of Southern song style look, I think. Or, you know, it's a session, uh, another master, earlier master of the minimalist Zen style. So that's very, uh, I can put a little green, it doesn't matter. So, but just, just like a little uh, rectangular dots. It's just, just kind of tree, not not to uh, necessarily indicate a specific tree. Just, just X cut strokes. We call it that, that kind of side brush stroke, dry brush stroke, but very calligraphic. You, you do it. You don't have to do it fast. You just, but you have to have a rhythm, some kind of a rhythm in it. Let me. Let me see on the ink picture one more time. The pattern on the back, um, I see, oh, okay, this one is clear. Yeah, just basically gray ink with uh, the resolution is cannot go that long. Um, I'll, I'll just maybe make it up with uh, my own interpretation uh for the bird like this so just we'll just do it to this uh, kind of like a gray let me let me go google to show you the real bird look like i, I think maybe you can find that Let's
it's probably not very common in North America. I haven't seen them uh, here myself, but I, in my hometown, Nanjing, I, I certainly know. Let me just type in the Chinese name, Bo Lao. Okay, oh, bird. Okay, let's see. Images. Here we go. I'm going to show you this uh, search result so you can take a look up uh, what they look like. Okay. I'm going to share screen. Let me show you this uh, Google search. Look at this. This is a beautiful color, right? I love it. I, I'm glad I, I did this so I can understand. So there's a, like a, a uh, scarf kind of white. Yeah, interesting. See, they, they eat rat, oh, it's like that. Okay, so yeah, it's, a, it's like a mark on the eye, very nice. So when we study uh, either darkling or bird, we, we need to understand from, from little detail to the entire bird. So when we do it, we have no thought of what, what we're doing. Look at this uh, coloration, this uh, brownly belly and the kind of cool, blue gray oh they eat something that okay then uh, they eat a lot of rat it's like a little eagle very very yeah it's so the the, the beak is not very from this angle at least but not very um, oh look at that look at this uh, this this beak it has like a pointed, very pointed on both sides of the, the beak and powerful, how powerful the claw is. That's very important to understand. Okay. Interesting bird. And see, I will take, a, if I take a picture down, let me see which one I will take. Maybe that, that's the one similar to us. Um, this, yeah, kind of, I think this, this tail really, you can see the proportion of this tail. I think I will pick this as a reference. And I'll take, uh, Uh, I think that's enough. <laughs> and got some water. Will you, can, can you give me some water, please? Get some water. Okay, um, do you guys have a chance to practice this uh, this word so far? Oh, are we ready to do a, to watch me, just watch me to do a composition? Okay, Gongben Wu Zhang. Oh, thank you, Keo, for the kanji. I, I never noticed the kanji, okay, thank you. So we're copying some uh, national treasures from uh, Japan. It's um, very important to learn from the grand, the great master in, in history. Um, and then you, you know, instead of learning from uh, um, 
a small master like me. <laughs> you, so you, you become middle master in the future. Okay, that's the idea. Okay, I'm going to set up uh, my table here with a scroll. Can you still hear me if I um, have to move my my mic? I, if you if you cannot hear, maybe I, I just talk less when I do this. Uh, because I already talked too much about this painting. So we'll just do it. Uh, forgive me, uh, uh, let me see. I just move this camera when I... Okay. Let me just uh, show you this picture again and then we'll move, uh, move it. I'll try to show the entire picture. Okay. Uh, temporarily, I, I, I will move this camera to this table so I can, okay, got it. Let me just disable my cell. So we're looking at this uh, empty scroll, right? But uh, uh, speaking of a copy, uh, we'd, we'd better do some, uh, um, some nail study first. So I don't have to look at the original. I just um, use a piece of uh, paper here. Let me show you. Let me see if I already moved the camera, what I can do. So basically, I, I will just copy this. Uh, let me make a print. Maybe that's easiest. And I will. I wish I have uh, done a thumbnail study so I don't have to copy the original. And you can print out this. Where it's a printing, right? Okay, let me see. Huh? Color, color chart. Mm -hmm. oh, not let me see this one. <clears throat> Basically, I, I, let me see what I understand is uh, this thing, something like that. This is the, the conversation, right? I don't have to really see a lot of detail. I mean, this is the original. So that's why we cannot really copy uh, stroke to stroke. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to start from the, the bird. Do you like black white? I think we just keep it black white first. Of all. Okay. So it's very important to, to, to make the proportion right. 
you can use your fingernail to nail down the control point. And the stale attribute of painting until you see the really birds standing there, you just try to capture it quick, as quickly as possible, the, the image, you, know, you trace it, like you, you're tracing the, the image, right, you know, appear on the, on the paper. So this is how we do this kind of thing. Carefully try to get the because the ink can also dry lighter. If you, if you have a, little, uh, a lesson learned earlier is that uh, if I miss the eye, it's kind of hard to make it up. So I was I I will use the ancient way of doing this by doing the eye first. Let me focus on that. Let's see. Can you hear me? Can you still hear me? I will do the eye first. So I concentrate on the eye. The, the lower part is a uh, heavier, it's a shade, it's a shade, and the top part is very thin, and it, it will, you know, have this kind of hair around the nestle. Okay. Because it's like uh, you know you're looking at from uh, low, so the, it should show more the lower part of the head. Pretty big head. Not large birds, but plain birds. And some white separates the shoulder and the back. Just dry brushing the detail. You know, if you don't know what what is, just dry brushing, and then add a little wet. It's a tiny dark. I see um, there is a thin wood, not straight, but uh, let's see, almost straight. But it seems like, a, like this direction. Very long tail. tail. And, uh, oops, that's a uh, it's supposed to be the tail, not the leaf. Just add, correct that. Just, you know, break, breaking ink, light into wet, uh, dark into wet, dark, light. And then just the other side. So this way, so just the leaf. All right. And brush, brush to get very light, dry, and just use the chisel side of the brush. And this brush, the simple wash brush, to be shaped into the chisel. And you can just work and chip. You might have some white there, but I think we'll just leave it. Suggested me. That's it. I love it so far. And uh, this black ink draws a powerful standing feet. So 
is one piece. This is the web. This the Rock the branch. It's mail. That's it. Maybe one or two bits. Anyway, my scroll is much shorter than the original. Yeah, I think it's a lot here. But this has to cut, get rid of that worm because it has a worm to, to fill in the, I call it a jumper between this large block and a small, a medium block. This, you know, this small thing is between the jumper, but if we, since we don't have any, we don't have to change that wall. And uh, um, I will use, I can see the bristle of this branch. It is a Japanese, uh, it, you know, they, they can use some kind of a very rough bristle, could be long hair. Um, from Japan, I have some. Uh, Mountain forest brush, very coarse ones. And I will just use this. It's probably a little bit. This is an ox ear hair brush made of uh, ox ear. It's work. I got one, uh, I'm probably to this brush. I think it will definitely create that kind of feel. Let's do a brush again. Um, usually we do dark first in, uh, in Chinese brush painting, but uh, um, you can also start on the, the black one, so you don't have to worry about it. We do this rock first. Uh, we just watch this horizon. Is this broken brush? Modify the sun. And this is called the X cut stroke. You don't see. Oh, sorry. Okay, let me. I forgot to adjust something. Okay, um, let me finish this corner. My brush is too rough. Let me just grab. So that's about it. And I can plot it. So it's not too wet. If you keep working on wet, you would tear it more. So I just use a large brush. This is I use this up to your hair brush. I have a good one called the Jana Chinti Kitasa. That's the same kind of brush. That actually used to be commissioned when uh, first you know, uh, introduced in Japan to a Japanese brush maker. That's why the up to your hair brush is relevant and perfect. So start with this number one position. Um, just off the, you know, from the corner. I'm trying to dry it maybe it's not there. We can just do the top part first. I see you start right there. So you might start it from here. Okay, so just here in the bank, the flat, and then the tip to directly, you can have a little angle there, and then go all the way down with your arm. Shoot. This could be repeated. I know it's going to be <laughs> blurry, but I, I think it's okay. You know, it's hard to do some All right. And we use uh, a 
Oops. Oh, see how difficult if you try to copy something, you need to be able to just let it happen naturally. So, um, that's why we do the dark first. When you have wet, you need to kind of convert it dry. Yes, sir. Oh, we will do it. Um, a little branch crossing looks like a subordinate. There's some kind of You know, just kind of side brush, just dry brush. So every brush comes like a like a, like a uh, like a bamboo root. That's why bamboo is so important. I think you know, the bamboo in orchids is why we need to study orchids and bamboo. Using one cone to break another but in the red is some dark in the branch the crossing the bird. This all the way to the formation right here. Okay, I'll just go to the new position. Idea complete, you know, without with the uh, absence of stroke. If you think something missing, you can add to the conclusion of the other. Or just fill in a little blank of the other. Okay, 
As you, as I said, if you copy a master, <laughs> you can be the best master in skill. You know, if you copy mine, <laughs> you won't get as good, right? I can I think the original skill is it's is right here on this corner. I need to follow that. <laughs> Height and seal. Okay, finished. Um, yeah, just the, my copy of that. I think this color could be uh, more, you know, minimum, but I got below, you cannot really control. But uh, if I had, you know, large, longer school, it, 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 it would be like, but uh, uh, once they change, everything should change. That's the difficult of composition. Everything is related. All right. Okay. Let, me, let me see what uh, what do you think? So uh, this is considered uh, you know like a semi size, but it's still because I, I painted the uh, wet first is very smearing sometimes when you paint it wet into wet. So um, you can use semi sized paper. That's that's the best. Um, you even can get away with the size. Um, but with raw paper, it's possible. It could be on silk. I'm not sure this uh, original is. I, I can check later and let you know. Um, but it is a freestyle, yeah. It could be, but I don't think they have raw paper at that time to paint the, like this uh, smearing effect. But uh, this is uh, my first time in carving, so I will continue to study. I thank you, Cassie, for your your uh, um, inspiration challenge or a suggestion. I I do like the idea of copying museum pieces. In, the, in my class, so we, we can all start high, you know, not just uh, paint uh, the teachers, you know, we should paint all the way, trace all the way to the source. Yeah. Okay, that's what's time we, we have uh, um, one more thing to do. That's the cherry blossom. It's also a Japanese theme because uh, Kao suggested, let me show you what he did in our class. Okay. I don't know why this doesn't show. Okay, let me see one more time. Uh, JPEG, I think this is a different problem. Okay, we got some technical problem. I tried to open it correctly. Okay, you got it. All right, <laughs> now this is a, a real scene from the, um, uh, a, uh, 
building called the White Heron Pavilion or uh, White Heron Mansion or whatever. Uh, this this beautiful building behind, very nice, and uh, in this in the flowering season with with uh, seeds of uh, flowers and, and with a river around it. So I really like that uh, feel. Uh, I, I changed this a little bit from this original uh, study by Kayo because the Jap Chinese painting tried to keep the boat smaller than the bridge and then, then you know, it has uh, more room in the river or something. And proportion we talked about instead of uh, uh, perspective is more important. In, so we try to keep the boat in, in a small, you know, you can pass the bridge, not not to be in the too large, but like this picture. So basically, if I draw this picture, I would do a uh, rearrangement. Let me focus back to my table here. Sorry about this shaking. Oops, what happens? I think I lost the image for some reason. We have connection or something. Just sorry, I I I think I touched something. I can't find this camera. Let me turn off. I don't know what what happened with this camera. It just stopped sending pictures. Um Okay, I have to use the backup camera. Battery. Battery? Yeah. Oh. Okay. So, so we just change the battery or we'll change the camera completely. Okay, let me see. Something wrong with the cable or something. I changed the camera, but still not working. Hmm. That's weird. Let me see, I have to start this program, restart this program. I think the program crashed. Okay, now we're back, okay. I think the program crashed, that's not the video. So I'm using my original webcam, maybe a little blurry, but it's good. Um, so I would do a thumbnail study first. You can do this with me if you like. Just uh, experiment with the uh, composition. Um, if you do a horizontal one, I would, um, I will emphasize on the tree instead of the, you know, instead of the bank or the river or the other uh, building things. So basically, I will treat the river just uh, behind the trees and maybe horizontally. And then the, the building is uh, in the distance somewhere. It's the, um, we don't really worry about uh, lighting or that kind of thing, but it's like building a bonsai design, you know, so you, you, you kind of play with uh, 
the element a little bit. And I try to make one tree really uh, stand out than the other. So that kind of create a, 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 a sense of dominance. That's uh, my idea. You cannot really see it, but as I draw this kind of thing, I, I start thinking about uh, my uh, procedure so I can draw it clear. So basically I, I would draw this tree, one tall, one short, and one in the, some in the distance, and then the building, the pavilion, or the mansion, whatever. And then around that with a more, it's on the, on the mountain, so on a hill, so it could be higher with more high, you know, higher uh, hills around that, something like that. And we can have more flowers in the front. That's, it's like a front, middle, and a distant, three grounds. And we should use different uh, pink. Uh, let me s just stick with this single paper, <laughs> this uh, raw, raw paper, and size paper, okay? So we start from dark first. I just use, use uh, um, oxier hairbrush from Japan. <clears throat> um, just, you know, draw the, the tree calligraphically. Oops. It's like a uh, deer horn shape. Some, some don't fuss too much with details. Concentrate on the gesture. On the uh, gesture, you can repeat some of the, the shapes. You know, try to think about some uh, movement, some wind kind of suggestion of the. Uh, I have uh, seen lots of uh, pictures recently from. Tokyo, and uh, I got some idea also from, you know, when I designed the elephant uh, decoration with a cherry blossom. I did this tree, so I got that idea from. And then I'll do some, uh, just the top of the you know, tree, with a horizontal movement, just some kind of, this is similar to the, uh, uh, plum, but I think cherry has a long kind of uh, uh, hair, <laughs> not hair, long branch, more like a willow. This kind of, just try to create some kind of rhythm, some um, it's a longer line, meaning. And then just wash. This is my foreground. So the second ground is lighter. It's less um, detail, more uh, just the, the main branches, maybe concentrate on the pattern, not individual trees. Like the, it could be shady. Uh, so that's the, you can have little suggestion of branches in the front, but that's it. And I draw this uh, focal point with uh, the building. Let me enlarge it so you can see. I won't, I, I won't do the perspective. I, I'll keep all the lines uh, straight. Like uh, I just draw, uh, it's very complicated. So, just uh, a solo weight, a solo weight. Okay.
just concentrate on alter shape, maybe. So basically, I'm not good to draw everything. Just the, the flying leaf, the, the, yeah, this kind of shape. And then just draw the sides with a little shadow. It should not complete all the windows in there, definitely not. And so that's a big thing already. They should be buried in the more trees. But you don't really see even branches, just the color. I think. That's my bone or structure. All right. I, I will not paint the branch hanging on in the sky, just like photography, you know. That, that's not, uh, I, I do the whole tree. And I already have some perspective in the Western style, you know, I have trees even larger than the building already. Right. Okay, now we just use a large brush. Let's do this quickly. And then uh, I use uh, Rouge. Let me just turn it over here. You don't have to use white, just use a lot of water, dilute it. <clears throat> and uh, you can you can just dot. I do, because the, this paint has some, uh, it's dried up, uh, you know, it has some particles in it. Maybe I just do it on the back. So it will filter out that uh, rough particles, I think. So this is the dark layers. It should be darker than the back. I concentrate on grouping of uh, the um, the shape, the form of the uh, like branches, not to, not just on top, just but on the entire trunk, you know, like, like so, and some in the front, and more, important to avoid um, the voice, you know, the white part to keep uh, the distant, the layers separate. Okay, let's turn it over. And you can keep adding dark on this side. Just to, it will dry lighter, I hope. But you want to do, do it on, on dry paper. So it gives, uh, we always start from, from a, a dry, then wet. And try to create the movement of a, you know, like a perspective. So, Some some tall, some some uh, short. Now it start dilute with more water. I got some ink in the water, but that's that's perfect. You just graze it down, so it gives less saturation. In it, okay. So maybe got too much dark, but uh, I'm just add a little ink back. So it kind of muted. And also, while you dilute it, you get this cream feel. And it should be a little drier, too. And try to create a uh, distance. So I start to, you can start doing wet into wet. And you know, just use light first, and then maybe dark to blur it. 
really far, something really far. Oops. This is a horizon. So we need to indicate that. This is just water, I think. This there is a little bit color indicated the, the horizon. And we just come back to this front layer with the light and bring them together. And still leave lots of uh, voice. You know the pine tree we did um, last time. That's the same kind of uh, space idea. You know, you 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 create the space, the depth with uh, only uh, the unpainted white, and this very soft and uh, misty. Background like that. I never been there, but uh, I try to get a sense of it. You see what you know. Sometimes when you paint outdoors, there you, you don't have the bird's eye view kind of idea. I I used to study you know buildings uh, like a bridge or dams and. I always paint when I got home. Uh, try imagine I stand in the in the sky, you know, like birds fly in the sky. And that's the idea of this kind of. You can even paint some uh, some reflections like that. And then. Um, some horizontal ripples. This suggest the, the river. Not not uh, ripples in the in the um, far distance there. And you can you can highlight the beauty with uh, maybe a little bit, just this you know gray whatever. Just a little shade, little shading. Windows. Windows. That's it. It's a white roof, I think. That's a, that's a all right. And look at the shady part. Gray. Just wash my palette or whatever. Right there. And I just add a little. Oh, we need to consolidate this. You can add a little dark rouge. I think this is the carmine I, mean, I used first. Now I add a little rouge to bring some shadow kind of to the trees, also to the foreground. The very close layer. It's okay to leave some bits of white pockets there and here and there. So, and you can, the large brush is actually better. So, you can just roll the brush. Just like that. Let it. Blend. I need some light. Now I just add that bolt. You can use uh, gray. That could be a bolt, actually. Let's just do it here. There, I think. Let's just do this here first. Just like that, and uh, standing person, and this is sitting nice. 
you can do it like a half boat there. Let me look at this picture here. Yeah, we can just do the, the boat right here. You can even hide behind this tree, like football shoot. Football shoot painting does. Like that. Okay. Um, it's a little, bit, a little bit too big, but I try to. I try to be faithful to the picture here. Okay. Let me draw this crazy boatman. I think this should, I should make it with face in this kind of orange color, but everybody has this nice hat. I think that's nice to have. It's easier <laughs> for me to do. Okay. And then just uh, some shadow under that. Yeah, that's it. And uh, just some color. Let me just use a little color for the face. You come in and just uh, this, this is brown color. Wait. Okay, some brown here. This. Frank and some brown on the trees. The concentration disperse, and uh, so you get one color concentrate, and then you just disperse somewhere. I just got a little, a little blue colors you can put in the shadow. Some part is dry, it's so very, very uh, white. It's, uh, it will be even out. So just wait. All right. And you can, you can paint a distant uh, snowy Fuji or something. I don't know where it, it is, but uh, Oh, there's a dot, that's, that's the flying uh, herring, I think. So you can add some birds from the river. It's still too wet. So. You know, just abstract kind of idea. So um, the birds flying or arriving. I'll, I'll wait it dry if, it, you know, if I want to add some, some more in between. So you have to consider this, um, you know, this paper requires patience sometimes. You have to wait. Let me see if I, Trying to press the sign. You can you can add maybe some another boat in the middle. I don't, know, I don't see it in the picture, but uh, you can always make it uh, more if needed. All right. Let me just add a little blue to the roof. We don't do the sky in blue. Let's 
Um, in one of the paint, uh, class, I think uh, with garden or something, Japanese garden, I did do with uh, the gouache or white dots. Uh, here I just, um, you know, use dry brush, split brush, some little bits of white will do that. Just leave it, it leave a little bit of white. Um, yeah, just, you know, make it easy not to dot millions of dots. Since this is basically the mood um, painting of the, the late spring and the, it's, it's basic. Okay, oh, the, the, um, the reflections. I do see some kind of reflection here. Let me just add a little bit. Just dry brush on the horizontal and the vertical, very good kind of feel. Use some white to recover that, that those heads. Inside it. I think it's over time. Is that did I? Uh, it should be. Oh yeah, it's ten minutes. Uh, okay, let me just finish by signing. We can sign right cross horizontally. Or like in, you know some kind of uh, line, just that way. Or you can sign here. I think I, I'll wait. To sign uh, the uh, put in the classroom later when I finish. I think it may be something here vertically. Yeah, that's what I think. On the left corner. What do you think? Yeah, it's still um, wet. Let me dry it so you can see the color. Sorry about the noise. Um, so this uh, completes this lesson. Um, 
I will continue maybe along two lines. I, I'm thinking, but not, not next time, maybe uh, in the next month. Uh, next month, I try to separate the landscape from uh, uh, flower and the birds. If you if you like to continue that way, let me know um, by, you know, feedback maybe. I don't like to give you a survey again, but uh, if you, you know, like uh, to suggest something, just email me. Um, just reply the registration email. If you like to join a more specific uh, programmed lesson, like uh, following a, some kind of uh, system, uh, systematic uh, learning, you know, like uh, flower and birds or landscape, let me know. Or I just kind of. Uh, giving this uh, demos by request, I will say, or improvising lesson. I really enjoy this form myself. Um, I, I think uh, it's more personalized, you know, you're part of it, you contribute to it. That's how we you know, grow it together. I like the challenge. You, you, uh, you like to learn new subject matters or you know, season or something. Um, has to do with the moment, not just the uh, copy and copy, you know. So, like the duck I saw today, I decided to do the duck yesterday. I mean, so it's just come live right to the moment. I think instead of schedule everything, I I I enjoyed this lesson a lot. This kind of lesson a lot. Hope you liked it um, by just watching and uh, if you could follow this you know i uh, I'll, I'll be happy to to give you critiques like i did with uh, this uh, uh, study that we oh i did i didn't include the bridge the red i think that bridge would be nice maybe we can still add to you know if i hadn't done this boat and maybe we can have a bridge there there is something is a landmark right yeah we could have we could, we could turn that into a bridge but uh, let me see would be nice but this give me a, a feel like a, a, a lake not a, a stream a river so i'm not sure let me know ko if you think uh, the bridge should be there. We can turn that boat into a bridge uh, somewhere there. I think your bridge is very good. I, I like that. You did very good. I can always I almost just copy your yours. Uh, the, the red real ones very nice, very Japanese. Yeah, I took that horizontal branch short. Yeah, if you see, you know, if I had this long hanging branch, it make it uh, like blocking the views, the imagination. So we try to open up the, the view. Um, that's the idea. So, this is the Side. This is me standing on, on this side, looking at the other side. This is not the bank, it's the river. So maybe we should that, make that to color different. So we, we, we try to uh, color different object in different, different kind of object in the same color. Uh, in, in a, a, a coloring according to kinds, that's the principle in coloring. So if people can identify all that is uh, chunk, it's, you know. But we use local colors a lot, and that's why local color means no, no uh, change of the uh, due to light. You just paint trees in, in its own color. Anyway, so hope it's a uh, um, yeah, just the demo. So this. Uh, maybe lighter because it, I did on mostly on the back. That's why I think it should be lighter 
when it's dry. So this is the the backside. And I, for for the reason that because the the, the color is kind of a um, dried up color, so it has some coarse particles. If you put it on the front, it would make it to look uh, granny. So I, I put it on the back. Also, I on make it very subtle. Um, so it will be lighter, I think. It's still not exactly what uh, the hue, uh, the value I want. It could be lighter, just like this light. It has this very strong contrast with the dark trunk of branches. Yeah. So this could be more just like one stroke. <laughs> So let me see your guy, you guys uh, practice any comments and uh, questions. Let me unmute yourself. Uh, yeah, I hope to, this lesson give you some uh, directions to practice. And you can take my regular class for Further, you know, practice like I already did this lesson in the early class. Thank you. Oh, unmute. Oh. Yes, unmute. Okay. Can you hear it? Can we yeah, expect it, Henry? Yes. Who's? Uh, it's beautiful. I wouldn't touch it. I would not put the bridge in, but you do what, you know, it's yours. You'll do that if you want, but. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, I think uh, it, it, it's, uh, it's a nice without that. I definitely will leave that out. Um, I didn't think about bridge in the beginning. That's why if you want to have the bridge, you, it, you should do it. You should have considered it at this stage. So uh, if I didn't have it, then I can't add it. And even the birds, yeah, the, I think it, we, we may have to, we may have to leave it out just like that. So this is just uh, some buildings in the, in the distance. Maybe. Well, yeah. it was a great class. Thank you very much as always. You're welcome. Yeah, I think uh, we, we, I should, I prefer you talk while I do. So I have some, uh, um, you, you know, but next time, if everybody find you know to unmute themselves, I I can let you unmute uh, during the, the demo, so you can you can give me suggestions and uh, response. Not That's just you know. All of us telling you what to do. I don't think so, Henry. <laughs> Not telling me my uh, just like uh, what do you think? You know, sometimes uh, it's a uh, it's a good idea to have a second opinion and. Uh, uh, something like uh, you, you didn't see the corner or something like Victoria keep coming to tell me that that's helpful. Thank you, Victoria. So I, yeah, I try to, um, you see, I have two cameras. One is like the high resolution one, but it has like a uh, jumping animation kind of uh, picture, but it has, it's more clear, maybe better than this. I'm, I'm not sure what's, it, what's the uh, difference do you feel? This is the webcam, the Logitech, and I have one, uh, which is a, a Sony camera. I yes. Used Sometimes it's hard to follow with the Sony camera because it jumps a lot. So uh, I, I don't know if you're going up or down with the stroke when it uh, touches the paper. Uh, I see. Uh, I see. Okay. I, I will. I will try both. But when I do the bees, is that camera maybe you know a For better. Small yeah, so with this camera, I cannot zoom. I can only do this. Okay. Yeah. But that, yeah. Or I can lower the the, the uh, tripod or the monopod. Some, somehow I, I can change that. Um, do you know why the other one is jumpy? This one is not jumpy, right? Right, Maybe that yeah. one's not. This, uh, that one is a high resolution, so um, I think the the con connection, the speed, does not really support the 4K or something like that. So uh, it it starts to program down 
the uh, uh, resolution. So actual picture you see is not as, as sharp as I see here, the preview window. So it, 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 it yes, yesterday when I carved the seal, it, it just um, disconnects several times. Uh, so I'm still experimenting with this. Um, maybe we can just, uh, Victoria preferred this uh, Logitech better than the other one. So he, because uh, in writing, you want to see the continuity of stroke. But I think maybe, you know, you want also see detail. So it's a trade-off. So maybe we can take turns just uh, that you see both. <laughs> that's, let's just do this, yeah. So the, yeah, the, the picture, yeah, I cannot zoom in, I cannot zoom out, but I can change angle, maybe, you know, just like uh, moving the, the track somehow like this. So this, this might, be. so what, what is guys thinking uh, if I need to um, design the course more like a, a regular class instead of a question answer request problem solving or like a brainstorming thing? <laughs> I like the, and I can paint, like when you were doing the, the ducks, we could paint, I could paint along or not. So I think having a little of each is good. Um, but I think I learn more by watching you and listening to what you're thinking okay. as you're. Uh, yeah, I, uh, yeah, if you. I agree. <laughs> I, I think most people would um, prefer to watch my demo and but do some step-by-step -step, like the duckering, right? So I will probably combine these two words, the creation of a real painting, like fine art and the practice, uh, and then try to find uh, the uh, uh, application of this you know, from the early, because that actually helped you to control the bleeding, the, the, the media, when you practice the ducklings or the chicks, that's all it has to do with how to, uh, make friends, you know, with the media. So um, when you paint this, it's just uh, uh, much easier. If, when, you, when you're familiar with the smear of this same kind of paper, let me just review what we did. So you just give you a quick review. This is the, the bird. I really like this color. I wish I could, this is the blue. I don't have much room here. So can you see it? So this is, what do you think about this copy? I love it. <laughs> yeah, I like this bird. Um, the composition really is not as zen as uh, the original, but it's okay, I think. I, I like just the two tone or three tone, you know, the black, white, and the gray. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. I I, I like the tonality of the the ink. Uh, it it really. I didn't expect this uh, scroll so uh, natural. It's like a, almost like a unmounted paper. You know, it has the sensitivity just like a regular paper. Sometimes it it, it become. Uh, kind of uh, stiff, but this is okay. I, I think, you know, it's very, very much like a um, unmounted paper. If you like, you can paint on paper and then mount it onto the scroll. But I, 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 I always like directly paint. It's very um, stimulating, I think, challenge. So I cannot really, Changes and you, it, actually, if you look at this, it, it goes it goes through the margin, but that's okay. Yeah. That's uh, I'll I'll put this in our shop maybe so you can take a look later online. Um, yeah, this is uh, it's nice. Also, let's take a look at the other pieces you did. And this darkening with a B. This B could be a little smaller. I'm not sure if you think 
It's okay on the small picture. It's actually larger than the actual B. That's what I'm thinking. But everything is larger than it. So it's okay. And this one is a copy of that. Uh, I changed the from vertical to horizontal. So this one, uh, yeah, I, I like this kind of uh, fence river on the river side. I kind of feel very rural kind of. Yeah. This would be a good picture to, to study because you just basically repeat and change a uh, little bit tones and the uh, placement. Yeah, this is the steps we did. So that's all for today. And uh, for those who are watching this on YouTube, uh, you didn't have a chance to, to practice with me, maybe uh, next time. And for my online students, you can always watch the recording uh, with the Zoom. Uh, if you if you cannot enlarge it there, I think my recording on Zoom is a full screen, just my my uh, speaker view, so it will be good. So if you missed anything today, you can always review it. Okay, I'm gonna stop the recording now. Thank you, Henry. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you next time. Hey. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you for, your, <laughs> for joining from Tokyo, uh, Kyubei. Mm -hmm. right. e excellent lesson, Henry. Yeah. Thank you, Lois. But first, congratulations, uh, congratulations. Your, your first Zoom is very successful. A lot of people have struggled with the technology. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I appreciate your, your participation, everybody. I hope everybody's safe and health. Thank you. And keep it. Uh, Our pleasure for being here. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Bye bye. I'm going to turn off now. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye. bye.